So I've, so I've been using the rental bikes. You know, the rental bikes they've got, they've got all over London. They're brilliant, those rental bikes, you know. The only problem is I refuse to call them Boris bikes. I refuse to call it. So I go to someone's house and they say, how'd you get it? I said, I came on one of the rental bikes. They said, Boris bikes. I said, no, I don't call them that. And it's just, just tense. Because I, I, don't, I don't see why he gets the credit for something he had nothing to do with, you know. It's just happened to happen on his watch, you know. He doesn't take the credit for other things, does he? They're not called the Boris riots, are they? <laughs> he didn't know there was anybody in London in August. <laughs> Why aren't they all in Tuscany? <laughs> I'll call them Boris bikes when I can park one on his fat ass like that. <laughs> and I don't, I'm, really, I'm not a fan of Boris. I, t I tell you why, because he's one of those people who's brilliant on television, but you don't really know what he's capable of. You know, he's quite, I find him quite a sinister, scary man, because he doesn't really say what he believes in. He just, he's just, I think he's capable of anything. And David Cameron's very similar, he's very good on television. You don't know what he's capable of. And the reason I mention it is the alternative is so piss poor, it's going to be one of those two, isn't it? Because Ed Miliband, there's no way you can have Ed Miliband as Prime Minister. It would be cruel. It would be cruel. <laughs> to put him on his own in a room with Vladimir Putin would be cruelty. Vladimir Putin would just stick his fingers up his nostrils and start dragging him around. <laughs> just booting him up the arse. <laughs> Ed Miliband would get bullied in the night garden. <laughs> Iggle Piggle just go. <clears throat> and he's such a strange looking man, isn't he? To me, he looks like a startled Hawaiian lesbian, doesn't he? <laughs> You know when you come across one in a clearing, they just... <laughs> and it, I think he said it, somebody said it in a speech recently, and I thought it was a very good thing about politics. And what they said was, they said, we should all think about what sort of world we want to live in. What sort of world do you want to live in? I think it's a very good question to ask people, to help them choose who to vote for, you know? And I started to think more and more about this. What sort of world do I want to live in? Help me choose which political parties to get behind. And I realised, for example, I want to live in a world, I want to live in a world where George Foreman actually makes those grills. That's the... <laughs> He's in a shed with loads of oxyacetylene, burning stuff, soldering kit. <laughs> Fella pops his head round the door and goes, George, we need more of them grills. We got an order here for 2,000 grills. You better hurry up, George. George goes, what do you think I'm doing, man? I'm making fucking grills. I'm having problems with a detachable drip tray for easy cleaning. <laughs> Motherfucker won't clip on right. You finish this goddamn grill, I'm gonna start another one. Mm, 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 mm. Sometimes I wish I never had the idea for making grills. Because I make them so damn good. Yeah, that's the world. I want to live in a world where if you put your name to something, it's because you made it. David Beckham has to make the pants that he sells in his name. Imagine if you were wearing a pair of pants made by David Beckham. Yeah. Actually, they'd probably just have one hole for the leg and you'd be walking around like that. Yeah, yeah, they've got these new Beckham pants. What do you reckon? They're pretty... <laughs> I look pretty cool in them, I think, you know? It's the sort of world I want to live in. I want to live in a world, this is really actually personal to me, I want to live in a world where a doctor doesn't need to get a long fibre optic cable with another cable attached to it, which they don't tell you about, two cables, doesn't need to get two cables and force them down your tiny little dry pee hole <laughs> into your bladder just to tell you everything's all right. <laughs> doesn't need to get two cables and force them down, deep down inside you. You know, you think about all the medical advancements that have been made, in med great leaps in medical science, and we're still sticking cables down a man's penis, you know? <laughs> Incredible leaps have been made, but on that area, nah, that's fine, just stick cables down there. <laughs> you, know, you know, they wouldn't have done that on the deck of the victory. They were sawing people's legs off, cutting them open, they go, should we stick the cable down there? No, for Christ's sake, that's... <laughs> That's horrendous. I want them to come up with something less medieval, you know? They probably, probably everyone goes, should we do something about this cable down the cock thing? Nah, it's just men, they just... He's going to do something horrible with his cock anyway, you know, sort of. <laughs> you know, force two cables down what I would never describe as a hole. I would never call that a hole. <laughs> if you saw that anywhere else, you wouldn't go as a hole there. You wouldn't, you wouldn't. <laughs> if you saw it on a bit of skirting board, you wouldn't go, oh, brilliant, we can... We can run the cables through there. That's lovely, that is. <laughs> that's, 
that's handy. We'll save on drilling. We'll just get them through there and knock off early. That's not a hole, then. It is a hole. You hold it straight and I'll get it in. That's a bloody hole, that is. <laughs> it's not a hole. It's a very deep crack. <laughs> you know. And in the process, ruin your penis. My penis is ruined. They've ruined it. It's not... It's not immediately obvious. Over time, you realise, you know. If I go for a piss now, it takes about half a second. <laughs> it's like emptying a bucket of water. Just... <laughs> Sorry about that. I do apologise. <laughs> Normally, I use the cubicles, but it was busy. But look what they did to it. Look what they did to it. Look, it's ruined. <laughs> You can keep tennis balls up there, you know, it's just a... <laughs> it's like a floppy Pringles tube. <laughs> another thing, all right, another thing that bugs me, I want to live in a world where cats respect fencing. Where they, you know... <laughs> if dogs were jumping round from garden to garden, you'd go, sort your bloody dog out, what's going on? Just jumped in, ran around the garden, scared the shit out of everyone. You can chain it up. They go, oh, you can't chain a cat up. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can chain anything up. You get it and you put a chain on it. <laughs> if you can put soap on a rope, you can put a chain on a cat. So I like it. <laughs> anyway, you don't need to. I've invented something. Solution, brilliant solution. It's a box. It's a long, narrow box. You put the cat in the box. At the end of the box, there's a hole for the cat's head. <laughs> At the bottom of the box, there's four holes for the cat's legs. Like that. And it can enjoy all of your garden. <laughs> it can enjoy every corner of your garden. And you can paint the box the same colour as the cat, so it's not embarrassed. <laughs> but as soon as it wants to leave your garden, uh, climb out, it's impeded by the box. <clears throat> and there you've got a solution. Because I'm sick and tired of looking out of my kitchen window and there's a cat staring at me like I'm something dripping off a toilet brush. Just... <laughs> Utter contempt on its face. Looks at, looks at me like I've built my home on an ancient cat burial ground. Like, <laughs> he has desecrated the resting place of the elders. I don't let them settle. As soon as I see one, literally, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm doing, as soon as I see one, coffee cup down like that, out the door. But that can be quite awkward, because I could be having a civilised conversation with a neighbour I barely know. <laughs> Just moved to the area. Yes, no, we'd love to come round for the barbecue. That's very... Yeah, on Tuesday, yes, yeah. Very... Excuse me a minute. Because <laughs> they don't like that, cats. Cats do not like that. To be honest, most people don't. There's very few... <laughs> There's very few people, if you go... <laughs> they go, be over in a sec. In fact, I use it in traffic instead of swearing. If someone cuts me up, I don't swear. If someone cuts me up, I just go... Because <laughs> they're never sure whether they saw that or not. Did I see that? One? <laughs> you really get in their mind, you know? And after you've done it, it returns with sort of like a cheery smile. Go... <laughs> get right in there. 